Amen. How are we doing this evening? Amen. We ask that you would join in and help us with our devotion. Amen. I'll be starting with the scripture. I'll be coming from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, starting at the 27th verse. When you have it, please signify by saying amen. amen. And it reads, O Israel, how can you say the Lord does not, does not see your troubles? How can you say God refuses to hear your, your case? Have you never heard or understood? Don't you know that the Lord is the everlasting God? the creator of all the earth. He never grows faint or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. He offers strength to the weak. Even youth will become exhausted and young men will give up. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength they will fly on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I have just read to you Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 27th through the 31st verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. We're going to continue to praise him. <laughs> Ask that you will lift, lend us your voices and help us lift up the name of Jesus. Come and go to that land. Come and go oh, to that land. Come and go oh, to that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Come and go oh, to that land. Come and go, oh, to that land. Come and go, oh, to that land where I'm bound. I have a Savior in that land. I have a Savior in that land. I have a savior uh, in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Oh, I have a savior in that land. I have a savior uh, in that land. I have a savior. Uh, in that land where I'm bound. Mm -hmm. A peace and happiness in that land. A peace and happiness in that land. A peace and happiness in that land. Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound, oh, peace and happiness in that land, oh, peace and happiness in that land, oh, peace and happiness in that land, oh, where I'm bound. So don't you want to go uh, to that land? Don't you want to go uh, to that land? Don't you want to go uh, to that land? Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Oh, don't you want to go? Uh, to that land, don't you want to go uh, 
to that land don't you want to go to that land where i'm bound amen amen don't you want to go amen we're going to continue to praise him just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil and my mind stayed on Jesus just another day that the Lord has kept me I'm so glad that the Lord has kept me. I'm so glad that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil and my mind stayed on Jesus just another day that the Lord has kept me Yes, yes, Lord. Just another day, Lord. Lord, Father God. Lord, it's days like today, Lord. Whoo, Lord, it was some, some trying time, Lord. And Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, if my action, Lord, didn't line up with, with, with your word, oh Lord, this day, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me, Lord. <sighs> Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to please forgive me, Lord, because my thoughts weren't supposed, weren't like, wasn't there like they're supposed to be today, Lord. And, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me, Lord. Lord, because it is truly my desire, Lord, to always put you first, Lord. But somehow, Lord, I let the devil intervene, Lord. So I'm just asking you, oh, Lord, to please forgive me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to see like you see, Lord. Help me, Lord, to forgive like you forgive, Lord. Help me, Lord, to understand, Lord, when people are misusing me, Lord. Help me, Lord, just to understand it, Lord, but to be able to just count it all just, Lord. And, Lord, I just want to say thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for just touching my heart, Lord, to realize, Lord, that sometimes I'm going to fall short, Lord. But I'm asking you, Lord, to just to forgive me, Lord. Therefore, Lord, whatever I'm going through, Lord, or we are going through, Lord, we're going to surrender it all unto you, O oh Lord. Because all our help come from you, O oh Lord. And all of my source of my blessing, Lord, they come from you, O oh Lord. And, Lord, I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sin this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for last night peace to rest, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning. It was all because of your grace and your mercy, Lord. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. But right now, Lord, we're asking you, Lord, to please, Lord, just to give us a word, Lord. Touch each and every one of these speaker heart, Lord. You just take control. You increase and they decrease, Lord. And so you can just give us a word, Lord, so we can make it through another day's journey, Lord. Because, Lord, we need you, Lord. Even when it don't seem like we need you, Lord, that's when we need you the most, Lord. So, Lord, this day, just send us a word, Lord, that's going to continue, Lord, to change our way, Lord. 
not just for the day, Lord, but forevermore, Lord, so we can continue, Lord, be a witness for you, O oh Lord, so we can continue, Lord, to show your goodness, so we can continue, Lord, to walk in your light, O oh Lord, so we can continue, Lord, to show the world that you live within us, Lord. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. I said it was on oh, Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Said it was they only Lord. You know I woke up this morning with my mind. I said it was on oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm down. My mind said it was on oh, Jesus. I'm down here praying with my mind. Said it was the only Lord. You know I'm down here praying with my mind. Said it was. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Said it was Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Said it was day on the Lord. Walking and talking with my mind. Said it was. Nothing is wrong with your mind. Said it was on oh, Jesus. It's nothing is wrong with your mind. Said it was only Lord, you know it's nothing wrong with your mind. Said it was. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Amen. Before we move on, uh, can we stand and recite our scripture reading? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1 and 1. And you know what we say, still here. One more time. Amen. Uh, at this time now, we're going to have a congregational song. And after that, the next voice that you will hear is Elder Larry Sanders. And let's please give him a hand clap. Amen.
Yes, we'll transition. Oh, none, none on earth done. Move can stand. We'll jump something eternal. You got a hold to God's unchanged. church you got to hold to God's unchanging hand because just like Jesus there's a time limit on us just like it was on Jesus and Jesus' time came and they called it Passion Week amen amen according to uh, Webster's ninth new collegiate dictionary it is the sufferings of Christ between the night of the Last Supper and his death on the cross. Amen? My scripture this evening is going to be uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. And it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Amen? Amen. Please be seated. Let us bow. And let us pray in this fashion. Our Father which art in heaven, holy is your name among all the earth. We come this evening not seeking something from you that we can see right now, but just to ask, Father God, that we may continue in your will and in your favor. We ask, Father God, that you continue to lead us into green pastures, that we may continue to prosper. Allow us, Father, to be your sheep and help us not to go astray. Make us strong as the temptations come and let us always know that you are with us and you are a heel that we can depend on. These things we pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ. 
Help me please say amen. 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 John 3 and 16, uh, a very familiar scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And this is the message and the passage of scripture that as believers we hang our hopes on for a future and a life after this life. For God sent his, world, his son into the world not to condemn the world but to save the world from its sins. James 6 and 23 says, Sin brings forth death, and this means a separation from God in hell forever, and that's not what I hope for. But God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for our sins instead of we ourselves. Today we are gathered together to talk about passion of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The same <clears throat> was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Born in Bethlehem and raised in an insignificant town of Nazareth, 15 miles from Galilee, there was there a few goats, some sheep, one inn, and some shepherds. What good could come <clears throat> from a place like that? Just a carpenter. But that's who God chooses to show the world that he is the creator. <clears throat> he grew in favor with God and with men. A carpenter, a builder, one who puts things together and causes them to work in concert with each other. He was fully God and he was fully man. He made wine from water. He told professional fishermen where to cast their nets. He said he would make them fishers of men. He said, if you drink the water that I will give, you will never thirst again. He said, the middle of, in the middle of the crowd pressed up against him, who touched me? As they pressed all around him, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He fed 5,000 while they sat on the ground. He made the blind see. He made the lame walk. But today is Thursday. This is the day that he was crucified for our transgressions and not his own. The scriptures reveal that even before Jesus was arrested, he knew what was going to happen to him. That he must hang on that old rugged cross so that those that he loved might be set free from sin. John 15 and 12 begins to say, love one another as I have loved you. No greater love hath any man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends, and you are my friends. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him into the garden and prayed with his father that this cup might pass from him. And though sweat fell from him like drops of blood, he focused on God's plan. He chose, can you say he chose? to go on to the cross. He made himself the ultimate substitute for the sins of others. There were more agendas out there in that crowd on this day than those who believed in Jesus Christ. There were those who were threatened by his message and they wanted to have him killed for their own security and their hold on the people. They mocked him on the cross. Hey, you who destroyed the temple and build it back in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross and we will believe. I, I'm not sugarcoating this thing right here. They yelled at him to come down from the cross. 
You saved others, save yourself on the way to the cross. He had suffered all night long. After being illegitimately arrested and after being whipped mercilessly, you see, for our sins, they whipped him with lashes that tore open his skin. And on his bloody frame, they plaited a crown of thorns and pressed it down on his head till bled, blood ran down his cheek. They forced him to carry his own instrument of death through the streets out of the city of Jerusalem on the way to the cross. They, they thought it was funny to give him vinegar when he was thirsty. He was, there was pain, there was pain on that cross. But he knew God's plan and he was not swayed from his purpose. Not my will, but thy will be done. And they still yelled, come down from the cross. You saved others, save yourself. Now, now look, <clears throat> this is love. Not that we loved God so much, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Who, who does that? The one who loves us in spite of what we may have done God loves us that's who now if that word propitiation seems a little stout for some try substitute try in our place instead of us suffering uh, in hell for our sins for all eternity God's son was sent he was sent y'all to satisfy God's wrath. Romans 3 and 25 gives us whom God set forth. You see, he sent him to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance and permission of God to declare, I say at this moment in time, his righteousness, that he might be just and a justifier of him which believe in Jesus. And still they yelled at him, come down from the cross. You saved others, save yourself. They didn't know, they didn't understand that staying on the cross and not coming down was proof that he was who he said that he was. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All the way out of Egypt, the promise was when you go through the waters, praise God, I'll be with you. When you, when you go through the wilderness, <clears throat> I'll be there too. When you're going through the darkness, I'll be a light unto your feet. When trials and tribulations cause you to stumble, I will not leave you. When a heartache and pain find you, I will not forsake you. But they yelled, come down from the cross. You saved others. Save yourself. I am blessed today with life in abundance because he did not come down down. I can do all things through him because he strengthens me and he did not come down. My need is supplied according to God's riches in heaven because he did not come down. I am the workmanship of God created by him through Jesus Christ because he did not come down. He is my righteousness, my sanctification. He is my redemption. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And I will praise him forever because he did not come down. He said, Father, forgive them. Can you say me too? Me too. Forgive me too. 
Forgive them for they know not what they do. He's hung on his head in the locks of his shoulders and he gave up the ghost. They pierced him in the side and right away came water and blood but he did not come down. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3 said, Paul says, for I delivered unto you first all that which I received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Yes, Christ in his flesh hung on that cross but the spirit the Holy Spirit yet has still much much more to do bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ amen Amen. Let's give him another hand clap of praise. There were a lot of nuggets in what he said, but one of the things is that he chose, he chose to die. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he did it for us to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. He said it many times. That's love, and we thank God for them. At this time, we're going to have another congregational hymn or praise and worship. <laughs> Come on, Sister Ada, let's give her a hand clap as she comes. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, I thank God for being here. Just a little nervous, but I know that I plead the blood against that fear that's trying to come up on me right now in the name of Jesus. I'm so glad you died for me. I'm so glad you shed your blood. For me, sweet Jesus, Jesus, I'm so glad you died for me, so glad. You shed your blood just for me. So you rose for me, sweet Jesus, Jesus, sweet. Jesus, yeah, I'm so glad you died for me, so glad you shed your blood just for me, so Jesus, help me say, Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, the precious name, 
sweet name. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Stand to your feet for our next speaker, Deacon Otis Smith. Let's give him a prayer. Yeah. 
You know, I, I have to say this before I get started. And I was sitting there, and God, he gave me confirmation on what I was going to talk about. When the other sinners got up here, he went to 1 Corinthians. I had already been there. Then when Sister Aiden talked about Jesus, it just confirmed what I wanted to share with you. So I just asked y'all to bear with me. And while we're yet standing, I want to go to a scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. And it reads as follows. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you which you received and on which you have taken your stand. Yeah. By this gospel, you are saved. Yeah. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, yeah. otherwise you have believed in vain. Yes, for, for what I re received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Yes. While we're just standing, dear Lord, most gracious and heavenly Father, I ask, Lord, that you bless me right now, that, Lord, you remove me, and you step in, Lord. And, Lord, use me as your instrument yes, to tell your people about you. Yes. And, Lord, I just ask that it would be edification for everyone here this evening, Lord. These and all those blessings rest in the Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What I'd like to share with you for a few minutes is a subject of why was Jesus raised? I want to share with you four reasons why I feel that way. But as I reflect back, and some of you can probably go back with me, you know, growing up as a kid, and even as a young man, I never quite understood why Easter was so important at the time. It seemed to me that what happened on the cross on Friday was a lot more important than what actually happened on Easter morning. Of course, I always believed in an empty tomb, that Jesus was raised from the dead, and I've heard sermons that talked about the resurrection like it was God stamping his approval on Jesus saying, see, he was my son after all. Or that the resurrection was an event where God got back at Satan. In some sense, it is God's stamp of approval on Jesus' work in ministry. And it is the defeat of death, which is a great enemy. But... There is more to the resurrection than that. And what I'd like to share with you is four reasons. The first reason, Jesus was raised to fulfill the scriptures. According to Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, Paul writes that Jesus was raised from the dead in accordance with the scriptures. If we seek to understand Old Testament passages about resurrection, we find that the Bible gives us a very, a very simple picture. At the end of time, God will raise all the dead back to life. Some will be condemned to everlasting destruction. We call that place hell. Others to a new life. Those who are saved and resurrected will inhabit a new heaven and a new earth. And their bodies will be perfect, glorious, and spirit-filled. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3 tells us that Jesus died to take away our sins as predicted by the scriptures. And in Corinthians 15 and 4, 
It also tells us that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead on the third day as predicted by the scriptures. In simple language, what it tells us is if you don't believe God came back, if you don't, if you don't believe God brought Jesus back to life, then your faith is worthless. And sin, and sin still has you under its power. Now, we all died to sin because of Adam. But we can be made alive because of Christ. This happens to each of us as we accept Jesus Christ through our confession. And that confession, if you reflect back to Romans 10 and 9, where it states, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. The fact that Jesus is alive today means that he is able to save today. This was a major argument of Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, where he explains how the whole Christian gospel depends on the resurrection of Jesus. And I want to reemphasize again that it is written, and if Christ had not been raised, then our preaching would have been in vain, and our faith would have been useless. And we are still, and we will still be in sin. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished too. If in Christ we have hope in this new life, we are of all, all people most to be pitied. The resurrection is not only a fundamental part of the gospel, but it is the glue that holds every part of the gospel together. Without it, Christians believe in vain and live without hope. But since Christ has risen from the grave, we have hope of forgiveness, justification, and eternal life. Let's look at that word justification. Justification means to be put right with. To be put right with. With what? Think about that. Because of our sin, humanity is cut off from a right relationship with God. And that's found in Romans 6 and 28. But someone stepping in to correct this situation, we cannot have the relationship with God that he intended. In the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, God put our punishment on Christ so that we could be justified. Again, being put right. Be justified before him. The resurrection of Jesus confirms that God accepted Christ's sacrifice for sin on the cross, and it gives us access to a right relationship to him. In Isaiah 53, verse 11 and 12, it talks about, by his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession. That means that he is intervening and he's a mediator for us, the transgressors. The second reason Jesus was raised. He was raised to provide us our salvation. Question for you to think about. Are you saved because of Jesus' death or because of his resurrection? Or because of both? Would salvation exist if Jesus had died and not been raised from the dead? Think about it. Would it exist if Jesus had died, but not had been raised from the dead? Well, Paul makes it clear in 1 Corinthians 15, we said that there is no atonement, that means repentance, shame, or remorse, without the resurrection. It is written in the scriptures. If Jesus had been raised, then we too have hope for a future resurrection. 
If Jesus had not been raised, then there would be no hope. We would still be in our sins with no hope, and there would be no way out. Jesus would be labeled a false messiah, and his disciples would be labeled false witnesses. But thanks to Jesus going to the cross, he provided us an opportunity for salvation. His resurrection was absolutely necessary. It wasn't enough for Jesus just to die. He had to defeat the final enemy known as death. Now, salvation means death to sin, freedom from sin. It's a new perspective that transcends the human point of view and participation in a new creation. Peace with God, life adopted children of God, baptism into Christ's death, and the reception of the Holy Spirit. Now, what are some of the benefits or promises of salvation? The first one I can think about is a personal relationship with God. A personal relationship with God. Never end in joy. Despite this world's chaos, salvation brings a deep-seated joy. Salvation means peace that surpasses all understanding. You'll find it through the salvation of Jesus. Salvation gives us hope of eternal life. Not this physical death that we die to, but a spiritual death, and we're resurrected. He gives us hope of an eternal life. He gives us guilt free living and freedom. Jesus took on our sins upon himself, granted us exoneration, and we no longer carry that weight of guilt. Salvation is transformation and a new life. And here's another important one that salvation gives us. It gives us the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit a gift avail available to every believer. He also promised us the gifts of the Spirit. We are all, we have our salvation, we all have different gifts. And my gift may not be the same as yours, yours may not be the same as mine, but God gives us those spiritual gifts. Also, salvation gives us unconditional love, known as agape love. God's love is unconditional. No matter how bad you've been, God still loves you. And he doesn't want to see you or I perish in hell. Salvation is a light in the darkness. It's a light of eternity. So you have that light, so you should let that light shine every day in your walk in life here on the earth so others can see that light. And salvation is help in the time of need. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Gifts from God. You can earn them no matter what you do. Moreover, Jesus is there when you need him. 24-7. Amen. Now, after Christ had risen and ascended, he, set the promised Holy, he sent the promised Holy Spirit to continue the work here on earth. This means that Christ's earthly ministry continues today through his people in whom he dwells by the Holy Spirit. This also means that Christ will help his people by the Spirit, by strengthening them, convicting them, guiding them into the life that God desires us to have. The third reason Jesus rose from the dead was to guarantee our resurrection. Now, this is crucial. Now, Paul's explanation in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 22 23 states that is that Jesus' resurrection serves as a down payment when he went to the cross and he died. It serves as a down payment, the guarantee of our own future resurrection. There can't be one without the other. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we are assured that each of us that are in him will also be raised from the dead. Now, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means that he will be raised 
like the resurrection of Jesus Christ means that he will be raised like him, uh, be raised like him. Christ is described as the first fruits of the resurrection from the dead, meaning that his resurrection is a precursor to the resurrection that all believers will experience. For as by man come death, wrote the apostle Paul, also by man comes the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Believers in Jesus Christ will enjoy resurrection lives just like Christ did, with glorified bodies raised in power. We may suffer in this life here on earth with pain and illness, but we will not suffer in the life to come. All earthly su suffering has an expiration date. That means that there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more sadness, no more turmoil, no more crime. But we will have the pleasures of heaven which will never end. The dead comes back to life when a body is planted physically and it decays. But when it is planted spiritually, it cannot decay. What that means is the body is like a state is planted physically, but when it is planted as a spiritual body, it will resurrect again and live in eternity. And the fourth reason that Jesus was raised from the dead was, and this is one I like, defeat death. He was raised to defeat death. Death is always an enemy. If you just watch someone die and know that something is wrong, with our world. Death is never a friend. It is a curse on God's good creation. It mars this world with pain and suffering. Death is to be fought, not embraced. Jesus defeated death. Death had no hold on him. And because we are in Christ, death will have no hold on us. We are rescued from the clutches of the enemy and then promised eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ shows that Jesus defeated death. Death is the enemy of mankind and the just punishment for our sins. Now one thing we do know that in this earthly life that the mortality rate is and will always be 100%. That basically says we're all going to die. No amount of effort, no medical technology, power or riches, I don't care if you're rich, poor, or whatever, you cannot escape the clutches of death. But rest assured, if you are saved and in Christ, death in the physical sense cannot hold you. Christ will rule until God put every enemy under his control. The last enemy that God will destroy, like I mentioned, is death. Now, Christ rose from the dead because death could no longer hold him. We no longer have to fear death because Christ has triumphed over it. That's what led the Apostle Paul to write, O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? Sin gives death its sting, but God's standards, his laws, give death its power. Who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ? In closing, I ask the question again, why was Jesus raised? My response, and I pray yours is the same, is, oh death, we have the victory. Because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead to fulfill the scriptures, allowing us to receive salvation, our bodies dying in sin, and being resurrected like Jesus when he defeated death. Then finally, we all can declare with assurance, Jesus is the Son of God, and he rose. He got up with all power in his hands. Ain't that good news? Amen. Pray my script in the Lord.
I like it when he said, ain't that good news? <laughs> That's good news. We are going to have a congregational uh, song or hymn, and then after that, stand to your feet and welcome our last speaker, missionary Robin McKinney. I'm going to hide behind the mountain. I'm going to hide behind the mountain. I'm going to hide, hide behind the mountain. I'm gonna hide behind the mountain. I'm gonna hide behind the. I'm gonna hide behind, hide behind the mountain. I'm going where the chilly, chilly winds on. I know that Jesus is, Jesus is the mountain. I know that Jesus is the mountain. I know that Jesus, Jesus is, Jesus is the man. I'm going where the chilly, chilly wind. Oh, I'm going where. Sunday, Sabbath will have no end. Will you meet me over there? Where chilly winds don't blow. I'm going where the chilly. Um, first, giving honor to God, and I just thank God, and I don't take this opportunity lightly. My pastor, my first lady, Mother McComb, my best friend, my husband, Kevin McKinney, and all you, my friends and family. Amen. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm putting my glasses on. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 23 verse 34 through 35. And mine may read a little different from yours because I'm going to read it from the message version. When you have it, say amen. amen. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Dividing up his clothes, they threw dice for them. The people stood there staring at Jesus. And the ringleaders made faces, taunting. He saved others. Let him save himself. The Messiah of God, huh. The chosen, huh. The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him, making, it, making a game of it. They, tossed, they toasted him with sour wine. So you're the king of the Jews. Save yourself. Printed, printed over him was a sign. This is 
the King of Jews. You may be seated. We've heard and we know that Christ hung on that cross. We heard that he died for our sins. We also heard that he rose again. But I just want to give you a little bit that what God gave me. And there, 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 this will be a night of transparency for Robin. Because, see, the word of God is going to speak to you before it speaks to anybody else. If I was to give this a subject, and if you would allow me just a moment to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord, to share what you have given me, God. And, Lord, I ask you right now to search my heart, God, and remove anything that may hinder this word from going forth, Lord God. If I did or said anything that offended anyone, Lord, I ask you to forgive me right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I pray right now that this word bless someone as it has, as it has blessed me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If I would give this a topic, it would be unconditional forgiveness. See, we all want to celebrate, and we all want to receive the blessings from Jesus. But there's a condition to it that we cannot do any of this. Christ hanging on that cross, Christ being beaten for our sins, unless we learn how to forgive, it's all in vain. I know that you love Christ as well as I do, and I know that we don't want him to, be, have, him to have hung on that cross in vain. Unconditional means absolute, no subject to, it's not subject to any terms or conditions. Thank you, Lord. Throughout the Bible, there are many expressions of God's unconditional love for us. God's unconditional love never fails. John 4 and 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. As I continue to read and research, I looked at the word forgive. The Greek word for forgive is a theony, which means pardon or release. Two powerful words, pardon or release. Jesus prayed, <clears throat> Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I read it again and I said, Father, forgive Robin. She don't know what she's doing. She don't know what she's doing when she can let a lot of things to harbor in her heart. Father, forgive her. She don't know what she's doing when she sit down on you because she refused to forgive. Father, forgive her. I'm so sorry, y'all. Jesus was asking for forgiveness for those who actually were responsible for putting him on the cross. The Roman soldiers who gambled for his clothes, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. The criminals on both sides of him, Father, forgive them, for he know not what they're doing. The, re the, re the religious leaders who mocked him, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. The crowd that was shouting disrespectful insults remarks at him, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Let me, if, let me just give you a little bit, and this, again, speaking to Robin. Unforgiveness took me out of my position. It stole my peace. It robbed me of my joy. And see, that's one of the things that the devil want to do. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's just what he done. Because I know that God had a, he has a work for me to do. But because I chose to not forgive, the enemy came in and tried to steal things from me. But I stand here today and I declare and I decree, not anymore. Because my, fa my, my father's son hung on a cross for my sins. He didn't have to. For a wretch like me, he didn't have to. Father, forgive me. God says that I can, that I can, that he came, that I can have life and have life more abundantly. But I can't if I have unforgiveness in my heart. See, the thing about that heart, I can't see yours, you can't see mine. 
but God sees it. He knows what's in our heart. Father, forgive me. Thank you, Lord God. Unforgiveness will hinder your fellowship with God. Unforgiveness will imprison you in your past. See, that's, some of, that's one of the major things that I had a problem with. I didn't want to forgive because of things that happened in the past. I didn't want to forgive because I felt like people said something or people may have did something that I didn't like. It wasn't my choice. I harbored it. Unforgiveness will keep the pain alive, never allowing the wound to heal, physically or emotionally. Unforgiveness will cause you to go through life reminding yourself of what you went through. Unforgiveness will cause you to accumulate bad feelings toward your offender, bad feelings toward family members, bad feelings toward spouses, co-workers, even our brothers and sisters in Christ. Unforgiveness is like poison to our souls. Keep an account of the wrongdoings you have suffered. <laughs> will cause you to become an emotional bookkeeper. Let's talk about the bookkeeper for a minute. See, a bookkeeper keeps detailed accounts, detailed records of debts and credit. They can keep this information for years. So if they need to go back and get it later, they can go to the little file room, to the little file cabinet, and they can pull it out. And it's very, it's so detailed that you that you to think it just happened. It's so it's very detailed. That's a bookkeeper. See, some of us are like that bookkeeper. Except our accounts are kept in our heart, not in a cabinet. Detailed accounts. Detailed hurts. Detailed disappointments. Huh. <laughs> some of us have accounts that are so detailed. Again, I say you would think it happened just yesterday. That's the trick of the devil, family. You see, as long as he can keep you in, in remembering those painful events, as long as he can keep those memories alive, holding us in hostage, mentally and physically, spiritually, because see, when you're held in bondage, you can't eat sometimes, you can't sleep sometimes, you can't think right sometimes, you can't sleep at night. Bondage. That's what he do. Mm. You'll never receive the blessings that God have for you. We, we can't move forward. I couldn't move forward looking backwards. And that's what the devil wants you to do. Jesus didn't suffer on that cross for me to continue living in yesterday. See, God said that he wanted me to have life and life more abundantly. Amen. In my closing, I have one question for you. Knowing that Christ suffered on that cross for your sins and mine, knowing he prayed and asked for forgiveness, the very people that had wronged him, my question to you tonight, are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to forgive and forget? Let it go. Release yourself from bondage of unforgiveness. I want to read to you a scripture that was just this powerful. Isaiah 53. When you choose to hold on to forgiveness, I want you to think about this, starting at verse 3. He was despised and rejected by the people. He was a man of sorrow, familiar with suffering. He was despised like no one from whom people turned, like no one from whom people turned their faces and went and we didn't consider him to be worthy of anything. He certainly has taken up on himself our suffering and carried our sorrow. Jesus did that for us. But we thought that God had wounded him, beat him, and punished him. He was punished for our rebellious acts, the act of unforgiveness. See, you can't truly love if you don't, if you don't forgive. He was crushed for our sins. He was punished so that we would have peace. See, with unforgiveness, you don't have no peace. You may act like you do, but you don't have no peace. Because, see, you keep reaching back and bringing it up, up in the forefront. That's not peace. That's anger. 
That's one of the things that unforgiveness will create. Amen? And we receive healing for his wounds. Brothers and sisters, I ask you, if you don't do anything, I ask you to let it go. When you forgive, it, 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 it lifts a weight off of you. Jesus bore the pain of being beaten on the cross for us. He asked God to forgive the very people that lied on him, that abused him, that didn't trust. And I believe some of those people were followers of his. Some of those people he had healed. The crowd that mocked him, but he asked, Father, forgive them because they know not what they're doing. Ephesians 4 and 31 says, 31 through 32, it tells us to get rid of our bitterness, rage, anger, harsh word, slander, as well as all type of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. We should forgive others when they sin against us. If we can't forgive others for their offenses against us, how do we expect God to forgive us? Forgiveness doesn't have anything to do with how you feel. Forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is with you, and forgiveness start with you. When we allow forgiveness to, to, ex to, exit, to exist in our hearts, we give God unhindered access to work in us. Transformation takes place. Matthew 6 and 14, for if, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others for their sins, your Father will not forgive you. Right now, I ask if we would, and, if, and I may, if I'm, I'm in order, sir, if we would just close our eyes and bow for just one minute, and if you would just pray with me. Father, forgive me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Pray my strength in the Lord. What a rich, powerful word, unconditional forgiveness. Can we give God a hand praise? It's a good word. We have heard from our capable speakers tonight. We have heard about what Paul said in Corinthians, that if we don't believe he is risen, then what we are doing is in vain. So would you just look at your neighbor and say, I believe. He is alive, he is risen, and because he is risen, we will see him again. Amen, amen. At this time, we are going to open the doors of the church. If there's anyone who would, after hearing those wonderful words of scripture, Hearing that, if God has moved upon your heart to give your life to him, please come at this time. Can't come for you, but we can walk with you. Anybody want to join the church, watch care? If not, we again thank God for all of our speakers. We have been richly blessed. And we thank you for allowing God to, to use you. Thank you. I believe at this time we are going to have our offering. Is that right? Announcements? We do have announcements. Okay, I think she's getting the announcements. Okay, thank you.
Amen. It's offering time, church. If you need a tithe envelope, please raise your hands and the ushers will assist you. What we have before you is good ground. If you have any type of correspondence for the archbishop, a prayer request, or you want to plant a seed, it goes right here in good ground. No tithes or offering goes in good ground. It goes in the baskets that the deacons are holding. We're standing. Would you please stand if you're able to stand? If you direct your attention to the monitors, we'll read our offertory scripture beginning now. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's Malachi 3 and 10. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you as humble as we know how, Lord. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, O Lord, for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day, O God, a day that was not promised to us, O God, and we thank you for that right now, O Lord. Lord, we thank you for the speakers tonight, O Lord. Thank you for that powerful word, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this offering, O God. We thank you for the opportunity, O God, to give back a portion which you have blessed us with. And you didn't have to do it, O God, but you did, and we thank you for that right now. Bless those that gave, O God. Bless those that had a desire to give, but had not. And may it all be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody face the center, and you're now in the hands of the ushers. Announcements for March 27th, 2024. Our members are asked to assist in the beautification of the sanctuary during Easter by donating Easter lilies. You may begin bringing your Easter lilies now through March 31st. Regularly scheduled ministry meetings for the week. Monday, April 1st, 6 p.m., missionaries and evangelists. Saturday, April 6th, 7.30 a.m. Deacon Ministry, 8 a.m. Christian Men, 
prayer service, and weekly Bible study is every Wednesday starting at 6 p.m. Pre-Resurrection Sunday activity is Saturday, March 30th, beginning with the final rehearsal for the Resurrection Day program from 10 to 11 a.m. All participants are asked to be present for this final rehearsal. Lunch will be served from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Join us as we celebrate our risen Savior throughout the Easter week and weekend. There will be games, activities, and egg and an egg hunt, and plenty of food and fun for everyone. Parents are asked to donate one bag of individually wrapped candy and one dozen hard-boiled colored eggs. From the hospitality ministry, everyone assisting with, lunch, with the lunch meal, please arrive by 10 a.m. Our Passion Week services are nightly, uh, from 6.45 p.m. nightly through Friday, March 29th. Sunrise service, Sunday, March 31st at 6 a.m. Bre breakfast will be served following the service. Sunday, school will begin at 9.35 a.m. and the morning worship service will begin at 10.45 a.m. From the hospitality ministry, Everyone assisting with breakfast, please arrive by 5.30 a.m. Attention all Christian men, get ready for the 2024 annual men retreat, which, <laughs> which takes place Thursday through Saturday, April 25th through the 27th, 2024. The fee for attending the retreat is $100. Please submit your completed registration form along with a $50 deposit as soon as possible. Your points of contact are Deacon Otis Smith, Deacon Kevin McKinney, Deacon James Howard, Deacon Frank Sanders, and Deacon Tyrone Grigley. Parents, if your child has made an A or a B honor roll this past nine weeks, please fill out the honor roll information data sheet placed in the completed, place the completed form in the box located on the Sunday school door. From the community, 20 employers will take part in a spring job fair on Tuesday, April 9th from 9 a.m. to 12 o'clock noon. The job fair is being hosted by the Enterprise Career Center, located at 2021 Bow Weevil Circle, Enterprise, Alabama. We also want to uh, give our condolences to Sister uh, Alma Key, her brother passed. All community announcements with flyers and our more detailed information along with DCFWC sign-up sheets, registration forms, et cetera, are in the information binder located in the information room. Thank each of you in advance for supporting these events and scheduled meetings as well as praying for, visiting, and or telephoning those who are incapacitated and are bereaved. Any other announcements? Mother, you have any announcements? If we would, let's stand and we will close out with an altar prayer. You may come here or you may stand where you are, but we will close out in prayer. Would you bow your heads? Father, how we thank you for what our ears have heard tonight. Thank you, God, that you have the victory. You have the victory, God, over death and sin and the grave. And because you rose again, God, we will rise too. And we say thank you. Thank you, God, for showing us how to live like you did. Thank you, God, for showing us how to forgive unconditionally. Thank you for the word that we heard on forgiveness, God. And thank you, God, for showing us that you first said, Father, forgive them. And now, God, we just thank you that you know how to handle every situation. 
God, you know how to handle powers that try to hinder us. God, you know how to handle people who may try to reject us or isolate us. And God, thank you, God, that you know how to handle problems. Oh, God, it may be sickness. It may be family problems, God, job problems. Whatever it is, God, you can handle it. And God, we just thank you for the victory that you have. And because you live, God, we have that same victory. And we just come to say thank you, God. And now, God, as we depart, protect us, be in us, be around us, so that wherever we go, others will know, God, that you live in us. And we declare and decree tonight that, yes, we believe that you live. You live because you live in us. Thank you for dying on the cross, God, but thank you, God, that you got up with all power in your hand. And we thank you and give you glory and let everybody say amen. Amen. Go in peace.